Overnight, Georgia officially certified its 16 electors for President-elect Biden and the state's leadership. The governor, the secretary of state, and lieutenant governor have all repeatedly defended how the election was run and refuted all of the president's unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud. Georgia's lieutenant governor, Jeff Duncan, joins us now. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Glad to be here. Thank you. So let's get right to it. The president called you out in a tweet last night saying you're a rhino, a Republican in name only, never Trumper. He also called you, quote, dumb or corrupt. Of course, you did respond right away on Twitter saying the priority should be the state Senate runoff races. If the president is listening tonight, what would be your message to him? Well, regardless of how many times my name shows up in a tweet, I'm, I'm still going to do my job as, as the law provides, and I'm still going to make sure uh, that we, we do all we can do to make sure every legal vote's counted, and that's exactly what we've done here. So, uh, look, I'm not going to lose focus on my job at hand, and uh, certainly we're going to keep working hard. The attorney general in Texas filed a petition to the Supreme Court today against Georgia and three other states arguing that those states, quote, exploited the COVID-19 pandemic to justify ignoring federal and state election laws and unlawfully enacting last minute changes. What's your response to that? Well, look, it, our legal system is, is open for everybody. I'm certain that they've got that right to file. I think we continue to watch court case after court case, not only here in Georgia, uh, but around the country, continue to line up and support the, the outcome of the election as, as it's been described the last few weeks. Look, we're five weeks into this, five weeks. And uh, we've certainly had our, our fair share of recounts here in Georgia, and we continue to validate those numbers. Was this a perfect election in Georgia? Absolutely not. I don't think any election in any state in any point in history has ever been 100% perfect. But it was fair and it was legal, and it certainly has been something that we've worked hard to make sure uh, that we've counted every legal vote. Now, you now have increased security around you. So does the governor, secretary of state, and other election officials. The president has called Georgia officials, quote, the enemy of the people. Are you concerned about your safety and that of your colleagues based on the president's words? Well, I don't want to talk much about the, the safety and security of my family, but yes, it is a concern for us, but uh, it still does not change us. We're not going to be deterred. We're not going to be intimidated to not do our job. And uh, certainly the person I voted for did not win the election, uh, but that doesn't change anything for us. We're going to keep working hard. Uh, you know, for, for, for me, it's hard, it's hard to go down this road of, of just believing mountains of misinformation, of, of, of supporting mountains of misinformation, and also in the same breath support democracy. Uh, they just don't line up with each other. Um, we've got to make sure that we're not picking and choosing certain selective facts to support a narrative just, just because we want to flip an election. That's not democracy. That's not America. Uh, and so we're going to make sure that we stay focused on separating fact from fiction. And as you just pointed out, the timeline that we are now five weeks to the day since the election, the Washington Post contacted every Republican in Congress. Roughly 220 Republicans won't even acknowledge that Biden won. In your estimation, at what point does your party need to come out and admit that Donald Trump lost the election in Georgia and across the country and move forward? And, and would you say that this is not helping with motivating voters in the runoff? Well, I, I have at this point uh, called a Vice President-elect Biden and, and talked about him being sworn in on January 20th. Uh, but the most important part for me as a Republican, a conservative Republican, is that the Constitution is still in place on the 20th of January, and I still have every right to to work against things I don't think are, are, are American or I don't think are supportive of small businesses or law enforcement. Uh, so, yeah, we, we still have the Constitution in place. And, and look, I, you mentioned it short term. We've got this pro the, these runoffs that we've got to stay focused on. And I don't think this helps. I think we've handed the perfect playbook off to the Democrats for the last five weeks, and it's not helping our, our case on January 5th. My hope is that folks do show up. We're able to pivot here and really focus on trying to remind folks in Georgia to show up. Uh, not just for Republicans here in Georgia, but for Republicans all over the country. Uh, but long term, I'm really concerned that this hurts the brand. Uh, and we'll get there. We'll have plenty of time to, to kind of digest and, and learn from, from some things that we did really well the last four years and certainly some things that we can do better. I'll start with I think we can communicate to America better than 280 characters on Twitter. The Georgia Senate Republican Caucus has come out and said after the January runoff, it wants to get rid of no excuse absentee balloting, which has been in place since 2005. There are no credible reports of widespread fraud after this election. Would you oppose any efforts to make it harder for Georgia residents to vote? 
Well, I am supportive of us coming back into session in January and really studying wh what, what we did right and what maybe we can improve on. And certainly we're going to go through the same process we do on every bill, whether it be education or the budget or, or public safety. We're, we're going to put it through the committee process. We're going to bipartisan uh, efforts look at it and try to improve it and get it to the Senate floor. And if we can get bipartisan support uh, throughout the process, then hopefully we, 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 we can get that across the finish line. But do you oppose the no excuse absentee voting? I'm not certain. I, I know all the details of that. I certainly have to dig into that. Now, we had Georgia election official Gabriel Sterling on last week, and I'll put the same question that I asked him to you. Uh, your lifelong Republican and Senators David Perdue and Kelly Leffler have not spoken up forcibly to condemn false statements from the president and threats against members of your own office. Do you still plan to vote for them in the runoff next month? Absolutely. I'm going to campaign hard for them, continue to campaign hard for them. You know, Georgia is a Republican state. All eight statewide constitutional officers are Republicans. We've got Republican majorities in the state house and the state Senate. Certainly support their, their, their policies and uh, certainly want to see them get in there to, to be reelected in the Senate. Uh, but my, my encouragement to them, to the president, to, to Republicans all over the country is to pivot your focus away from this misinformation uh, around election fraud and focus in on getting them reelected. It's going to take every single vote uh, at this point. Does policy come before people? I'm, I'm curious if you're if we're talking about you know people being disappointed in in leadership and not speaking up. Does that matter or is it more about uh, the brand as you called it? Well, look, I, I think that's a complicated question. My campaign slogan was policy over politics. I think that might be a, 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 a separate way to, to look at that question. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we've got to make sure we put folks, and I, I think it's important to understand this. We don't have to invite people to vote for Republicans because they agree with us 100% of the time. I think we've got to be understanding that folks aren't going to be with us on every single issue. But overwhelmingly, I believe Georgians want their neighborhoods to be safe. They want their taxes to be low. They want their small businesses to not be overregulated. Those are things that I believe the Republicans that we have to pick from, Senator Leffler and Senator Perdue, I believe they champion those. And I think an overwhelming majority of Georgians support that. Also, an interesting statistic to look at, on Election Day on, on November 3rd or November 5th, we had 53.7% of Georgians voted for a Republican state senator. That's a good, strong, healthy majority. Uh, and I'm proud of that as, as the president of the Senate. Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, we thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely, thanks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.